broad thumbnail sketch of who is doing what. Um, we've got a team at Penn State who's doing the lion's share of the viral work that I've been describing. Um, we've got several colleagues around the country who are working with us that are not directly in our CAP project um, that are working on these uh, RNA silencing technologies. Jamie Ellis, who I think some of you know, a former student of mine, uh, he's uh, working on RNA silencing for Varroa. So this, I think, is um, exciting as well. Uh, the group at Penn State is also very involved in uh, pesticides and their effects on bees. Um, I'm involved in the study on the effects of pesticides on bees, the beehive chemicals used on bees. And we are not looking at whether it kills bees or not. Uh, we're looking at sublethal effects. Um, things that, for instance, that uh, Amitraz or Fluvalinate or Kumafos, what kind of effects do they have on honeybees that are short of fatal? Sublethal effects. And we're finding quite a bit. Um, one of the most surprising things I have found uh, so far on this work is the, the impact of wood preservative. Uh, we have shown that uh, copper naphthenate wood preservative, which we have formerly recommended, uh, itself seems to have some problems associated with it. Uh, we have shown, for instance, that it slows down uh, bees' learning ability. There's some cognitive costs for bees that live in that environment. Uh, we've shown some um, impacts on honeybee learning and memory on uh, fluvalinate and kumafos as well. So these are a part of this cloud. Pesticides, not only the pesticides applied in agriculture, but the pesticides that the beekeeper themselves use in the hives. Um, our colleagues at Penn State are saying, okay, we know that CCD is a cloud. It's not linear. It's a cloud of issues. And we're trying to get a handle on that cloud. Here's how it works. Um, Nazima. Is Nazima bad on bees? Yeah. Nazima is bad on bees. Okay, well, how about Nazima and fluvalinate? Mm, it's probably bad. A lot of times you get 2 plus 2 equals 5 on these combinations. We call it synergy, where you get interactions happening between two chemicals that are worse than the sum of the two. They interact and enhance the negative impact on the bee. So what we're doing, and this is really awful. It's, I hate this, but this is how, there's no way around it. We do lab studies. We got incubators. We set up bees in little cages and we feed them chemical X. Okay, and then we monitor how long they live or, or whatever we want to test. And we do large numbers. I mean, generally in the neighborhood of 50 to 100 cages at a test. Well, okay, let's give this cage Nozema plus blue valinate. Okay, well, this cage has Nozema plus blue valinate. Well, what about Israeli acute paralysis virus? Oh, geez. Okay, well, let's add to this case, they get Israeli acute and Nazima and Amitret. You see, where does this end? Okay, it's, it's, it's an endless slippery slope. And, you know, obviously we cannot test every possible combination because the, cost, the possible combinations are literally infinite, <coughs> aren't they? They're, they're literally infinite. So what we have done is narrowed it down. We're testing deformed wing virus and Israeli acute paralysis virus. Amitraz, fluvalinate, and Kumafos, and Nozema serrani, and Nozema apis. Those seven factors there are what we're going to be testing in combinations. It's terrible. It's terrible, but there's no other way around. And it's just drudgery with incubator tests. And the point is, what we're trying to say, again, is um, what's, what's the most important thing on this picture? I, I think we all agree that all of these things are a part of the problem. But what we're trying to get out of this is a little focus, okay? We're, we're trying to say, yeah, all of these things are a problem, but this and this are really causing 85% of the morbidity that we see. And I hope at the end of our four-year grant we'll be able to say something like that. that you know, statistically, a lot of this is, is exercises in statistics. And we do um, you know, lots of combinations, and we see which combination keeps bubbling to the top, and we come to statistical inferences. And we think all things equal, we think that Israeli acute paralysis virus <laughs> and Nazima Sarani is explaining 75 or 80 percent of the colony deaths that we see in the United States. That would be useful. And if we could drag along a new novel <coughs> medium like RNA silencing, that would be a good four years' work. Um, we're fun.
funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, and their, um, their mandate is twofold. They want us to do the original science. They also want us to deliver the results to our client communities. And that means the beekeeping industry of the United States. I want you all to, um, to, to Google when you get the chance a uh, bee health, bee health, bee health website. And this is a, a monster website that we are constructing under a platform called eextension.org. It's not edu, it's .org. And um, this, the whole eextension.org thing is a mammoth initiative by USDA to provide science-based refereed information on the net about anything. Horses, no sweat. Go to eextension.org and type in horses and you're in business. Goats, dairy goods. Meat goods, name it, there. Gardening, there it is. Bees are now there. It's a universal platform that has many agricultural areas, and bee health is now one of them. So we have formed a, a community, our, our cat group, is on the extension.org, and we're creating a, a central warehouse of all the science based information on honey bee health. And what it is, it, it's a way to get around the perennial problem is how can you trust information you find on the internet? Well, this is a refereed site that is policed, that only has information that has been um, sanctioned by the scientific community that runs it. So check out BeHealth on the extension.org network and just, just track us, keep up with what we're doing. My own website, UGA, will link you there. You can go there. So once again, the uh, UGA website is sort of a portal to everything, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm going to X out of this PowerPoint again because I'm <laughs> darn Bill Gates. He got here first. And, um, I got a slide project out <laughs> Bill Gates always gets the final word, doesn't he? Um, so <laughs> it's working here. It's just <laughs> I think it's Tom. He's Tom, the one that Tom, changed. Let's blame Tom. I agree. Blame Tom. That's right. That's okay. I really need to. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit. Of, <laughs> darn, sir. I'll tell you what. I'm just going to X out of PowerPoint. Bye-bye. And uh, see if I can... Um,